Sword Online and Axel World are still not officially definitively connected. All thanks to Reki Kawara's constant teasing about the connections followed up by keep reading to find out the answer, but at this point we basically have a full-on villain crossover between the two series among a lot more connections. Hello everyone, it's me GamerTurk. A while back I asked for your questions on anything Sword Online. You did play your part, now it's my turn. Some questions will have brief answers as YouTube Shorts, some will have longer answers that need their own video, such as <laughs> this one here, took a lot longer than I intended to. The connections between Sword Online and Axel World that takes place 20 years into the future in time, both written by Reki Kawahara, and also consider yourself warned for potential spoilers from both series. If you have any questions you want answered, write them down in the comments and include hashtag AskGamerTurk so I can filter them properly. Want some inspiration for question ideas? Space is always inspiring, so let me introduce you to the sponsor of this video. Honkai Star Rail is a space fantasy RPG by HoYoWorks, the makers of Genshin Impact. And no better time to dive into this space adventure than now, as the highly anticipated version 1.2 arrived recently, launching you into the epic climax where you'll be experiencing the finale of the story on the Xianso Luofu. Join now using my link in the description and enjoy the game with more than 20 charming characters, each with their own vibrant personalities and backstories. Joining that cast are limited 5-star characters Blade and Kafka. Blade is a wind-type damage dealer. He's very much a risk and reward character, taking damage with him increases the damage he deals to his enemies. He can also sacrifice his own HP to deal area damage in order to deal with crowds. Don't be fooled by his silent attire, the moment he switches his personality, he becomes the deadliest assassin you can ever come across fueled by rage. Kafka on the other hand is elegant and beautiful, enigmatic, unpredictable, smiling at you with mystery. With her katana and SMG she can quickly launch follow-up attacks, with her lightning damage ultimate she can inflict enemies with shock, and her abilities and talent trigger damage over time via companions. Don't miss your chance to get these amazing limited characters and join Honkai Star Rail version 1.2 now to experience the climactic story, two new maps with new environments, limited time events, and bonuses, and even more. Play now using the link in the description, enjoy, and thank you to Honkai Star Rail for sponsoring this video. Okay, back to our virtual world, Sword Online and Axel World. At this point, it's absolutely undeniable that the two series are connected one way or another. I'm gonna gloss over things like Order, Kurikima also a Star Wars stream and Eclipse, she has to be Kirito's child tier basic stuff. Everyone heard about all of that and it's one of the reasons why it's hard to take a lot of the mainstream fans seriously when theorizing on this topic because the extent of their knowledge is quite limited and they don't even realize both Starbar Stream and Eclipse of Kuroyuki is completely different than Kirito's trademark Aincrad skills. Hime's attacks are literally ranged attacks that have nothing to do with Kirito's aside from sharing a name. So why don't we begin there? The perceptive ones among you realized I did not bring up Warpul Strike while being snobby elitist looking down on others who are less knowledgeable, how truly evil of me. I hope you can forgive me, but that's because the video has a structure to make things easier for you to digest. You see, while Starbar Stream and Eclipse of Hime and Kirito that we know of are completely different, we have an actual tangible reasonable hook with Warpul Strike. And that's exactly where we'll work off of. The typical Warpal Strike is a simple, long, lunging, thrusting attack. However, if you look back to Elicization, the incarnate Warpal Strike used against Chudelkin is very much a ranged, laser-like attack that extends from the tip of the sword. And that is the exact Warpal Strike usage that Kuroikime possesses in Axel World, long-range, laser-like thrust attack. And what does Brain Burst function on? Incarnation. So it's easy to conclude that both of these incarnate Warpal strikes match each other. In fact, we have seen both of them used in their respective anime adaptations. So here is our reasonable link. So let's keep unraveling this thread from here. Based on that logic, both the Starbar Stream and the Eclipse could simply be incarnate forms that Kirito will eventually use in the Sword Online series. In fact, 
Perhaps he has already discovered them during the 200 years but simply does not remember it personally at the moment with that knowledge only residing with the copy of Star King. Or perhaps with the United Ring heating up the circumstances in Underworld we may not be that far away from him discovering them in the first place or perhaps an even more dire situation that would include incarnation as a mechanic in the interintelligence war could be the source whatever that may be wink wink so let's let's not go that far ahead just yet with the war that would require stepping into the villains topic so our current sensible theory is that Kuroikime knows three incarnate attacks that originally stem from Kirito so that must mean she's Kirito's child no 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 you you see that's how huge insensible leaps are made. It's not impossible that Hime could be Kirito Nasuna's child, but as things stand, there's not a single thing that would even remotely suggest that being the case. Her real name that has been revealed in recent releases is Kuroba Sayuki, completely different family name, and there's more to talk about on that front both in favor and against. You see, Kuroikime has quite the family troubles, even from the season 1 of the Axe World anime that is very evident and constantly stated. If anyone here is to push the idea that Hime is Kirito Nasuna's child, that certainly does not reflect well for the future of the duo. Not only it is not imaginable that Kirito and Asuna would have a bad relationship with each other or their kid, although Kirito definitely has the potential to have their child be harmed by merely existing and subsequently blame himself for it, and more importantly, <laughs> all of these theories are being built with significantly lacking information, a common theme when it comes to these theories, because most people who want to theorize on this stuff are just too lazy to actually learn about the available content. Most of their claims stem from things they observed in the first season of the Axel World anime, out of a series that is now pushing almost 30 volumes of content. So let's fill those blanks a little now, shall we? Kuroikime is not a biological floodlight. That means she is not a naturally born human. Her body is naturally born as the daughter of the heir to the Kamura company, but the floodlight residing within that body is not the original floodlight born with that body. This heir to Kamura overrode the floodlight of the baby with one from somewhere else, and that other floodlight is who Kuroikime is. This is not only effectively what Quinella did with Lyserith in Elcization, but also leaves the door open for potentials revolving around Kuroikime herself. But who is this mysterious heir to the Kamura company? We don't know, well, at least in Axel world we don't. In Swart Online, Kamura Company has established a presence for quite some time now. They were very notable in ordinal scale related information such as now handling the Swart Online backup servers and running the Diva Yuna after the OS incident, but the heir of the company, she did already make an appearance in the series with United Ring, a girl particularly interested in Asuna. That person is Kamura Shikimi. Just to remind you, there are assumptions being made here, the hypothesis after all is that the two series are connected. But keep in mind that we are working off of tangible stuff, not a random Nerve Gear reference that was made in Axel World Anime, or name drops of brain implant chip without any context, they can easily be, you know, glossed over as just borrowing concepts or terminologies from the other series. The title of Heir of Kamura is quite the specific one here. <sighs> Gotta love script writing, my plan was to move from Hime to Graphite Edge, but writing it all, it just felt more natural to go down this path instead. So, <laughs> who is this Kamura Shikimi that we assume to be the biological mother, or creator, or owner of Kuroikime, however you want to see the connection between the two? Well, to be honest, we don't know. She suddenly appears in United Ring at the Survivor School, talks to Asuna that she wants to spend more time with her, claiming to know her from the Eterna Girls Academy, their middle school, despite Asuna not remembering her at all. Eterna is yet another connection between the two series by the way, but I digress for now. And just when we were about to learn more information about Kamura Shikimi, as Asuna had agreed to have a meal with her, she just never showed up to the planned meeting. Almost as if she had a very delicate and thorough plan and something went totally wrong so she had to go back to scheming. 
Why don't we step away from the real world and enter United Ring for a bit then? You see, just the previous night Asuna 2 was quite busy and stressed. There was a big assault coming their way and Asuna, Kirito and everyone else had to be on top of their game and execute their counter ambush perfectly to be able to defy the odds and defeat the army of Mutasina, a mysterious woman who kept all Alo players under her control with a devious spell, hell bent on taking out Kirito and Ko because she saw them as wild cards, variables that she could not trust on her journey. In fact, that's pretty much how she saw every single player in the game. To clear United Ring, all players must work together to reach the land revealed by the heavenly light, which means just go to the center of the map. But Mutasina believed that it was human nature to infight in the wake of glory so that one could have the glory to themselves, leading to betrayals. She believed that humans simply could not be trusted to peacefully cooperate into success. And most importantly, she believed that without that cooperation, the United Ring incident would end in nothing but a major disaster. In this goal, Mutasina had created the Virtual Research Society, which I'm still mad that the Empress for some reason translated it as Virtual Study Society, because that is also one of the prominent links between the two series. But Virtual Research Society, led by Mutasina, were dealt a massive blow that night, an unimaginable blow from Mutasina's perspective that for the first time she looked shaken. I don't think I need to say more, we <laughs> don't know for certain, but it is believed that Mutasina is in fact Kamura Shikimi, and this defeat and the change of plans that ensued is the reason why Shikimi never made it to her planned meetup with Asuna the next day. The work of the Virtual Research Society is simply too important, much like how the work of the Acceleration Research Society is all too important over in Excel world. And yes, that is exactly why it was very annoying to have the term different in Yenpress translation as Axel World and Sword Online have different translators. But this acceleration research society in Axel World is led by someone called White Cosmos, the White King, and is based in Eterna Girls Academy, where they attend school about 20 years after Kamura Shikimi and Asuna attended it. White Cosmos herself is Kurohikime's biological sibling, Kuroba Enju, the other daughter of the heir of Kamura, pretty much working in the footsteps of her mother in this case. And you see, when it comes to White Cosmos, she speaks of a previous virtual world, comparing it to Brain Burst, where the goal is to reach level 10 and meet the world's creator to learn anything they want. Once upon a time, there was another world with a similar goal. Players from different worlds were brought together into this one and had a choice. Either they were to cooperate and clear the game, or they would give in to infighting, destroying everyone else before they got a chance to betray them instead. Those of you who have read United Ring, even if it's just the first volume, must find this eerily familiar. United Ring is a seed-based game that merged all the other seed games into one. Alfheim Online, Asuka Empire, Gangale Online, Apocalyptic Date, Insect Sight and all other games forcefully pulled into United Ring. The goal? Well, I mentioned it earlier. Reach the land revealed by the heavenly light and all shall be revealed. That could very well be the virtual world White Cosmos is hinting at, especially when you factor in Mutasina's thought process that it was human nature to eventually betray one another and cooperation can only be achieved via subjugation. And now that Mutasina no longer had her ability to force people into obedience in United Ring, if she was to be believed, United Ring would soon become a world of betrayal unlike what Kirito believed in in comparison. That people could rally together and clear this game together. Kirito was an SAO survivor, most players banded together in the direst of circumstances under a common goal after all back in Aincrad. But perhaps that only proved Mutasina right, that players only managed it with minimal infighting because death was looming all over their heads in Aincrad. But let's go back to White Cosmos in Axel World. She goes one step further. She talks of an idealistic player who was present in that previous virtual world. Apparently, many people believed the words of this player, listened to his words, 
but according to her, in the end, it was all too late. It's tricky to judge considering we don't know what will become of United Ring as of right now, but a disaster could very well be on the horizon considering the story should twist into the interintelligence war at some point. And it is generally expected that Project Elicization will be involved in this war as well, with there seemingly being a real worlder infiltrator in Underworld, instigating trouble and bringing back up the remnants of the rebellion of the four empires from Moon Cradle. But what of the artificial floodlights of Sword Online series? What happened to them in the future? Well, <laughs> you see, the bleak outlook on the horizon continues if you look over to Axel World. The connections continue. Currently in Sword Online, the Ocean Turtle is on complete lockdown and will be going through a couple years long bureaucratic legal governmental process, which just basically means hell. And you see, with Elicization taking place in June, July of 2026, we have a matching timeline for, well, in the Axel World series, we have two major pieces of information that matches here. That there was a great, great conflict that arose in late 2020s that led to an advanced AI technology being sealed for good by the government, and then separately, the research on floodlight technology was completely halted around the same time. It surely cannot be a coincidence that both of these technologies, or research rather, they reside on Ocean Turtle that is now on full lockdown with a lengthy legal battle to go through within the government. And I think this is a good part to tie things around a bit. You must be asking, well, what happened to Alistair? She was ejected from Ocean Turtle and made her way to normal life. Well, <laughs> as with a lot of things, it's a lot of speculation based on vague references and terminologies. In fact, it is a little bit more than that in this case, it's an extremely vague story. Graphite Edge, the mentor of Kuroiki Hime, speaks of a tale, the origin of the accelerated world. The story makes mention of two entities fighting a war. Both sought a person of interest, or rather defined as a being in the story, one wanting to destroy it, the other wanting to protect it. The one aiming to defeat the being managed to seal her in an enhanced armament akin to a special equipment in the Axel World series that became known as the Fluctuating Light and created fortifications and guards in the form of god monsters to prevent her from being freed. The person was later killed by the one seeking to protect this being, however, he was not powerful enough to get past the fortifications to free the being inside the fluctuating light. He was forced to retreat and later created three accelerated worlds. Axel Assault, known as AA, Brain Burst, known as BB, which is where the Axel World series takes place mainly, and Cosmos Corrupt, known as CC, hoping to find warriors fierce and powerful enough to defeat those fortifications and free the fluctuating light. And the entire time, I put the respective illustration on your screen and you probably have caught on to a lot of things here. We are to assume Project Elicization is completely shut down based on the history lesson, but Alice was still supposed to be around, and this quote unquote fluctuating light, quite literally how the floodlight is described at the end of Elicization by Reiki himself in the ending poem, is mostly theorized to be Alice herself. As for those duking it out, the developer of the accelerated world, the one trying to protect and save the fluctuating light, is generally assumed to be Kirtyo. As for the light figure, your guess is as good as anyone else's. Or <laughs> perhaps uh, you should actually ask an Axel World specialist, Emil, Nios, feel free to share your thoughts, I know you'll eventually watch the video, you know more than I do. Uh, for a long time, I thought the light figure would be Star King, and this is like the climax of SAO, but again, why would Star King want to destroy Alice? He fights for Underworld, to protect Underworld, so unless there comes a point where the destruction of Alice creates a chance to save or legitimize Underworld, I really don't see him going down that path. Well, we don't know much about the Star King, he's not evil. And other than that, 
Who knows, maybe United Ring or the following Interintelligence War will give us an idea sometime in the future. As for the last main thing to cover in this video, I know a lot of you are screaming at me for not covering it at the beginning as I was initially going to and then mentioning it just in this last point. Let's look at Graphite Edge. At the very beginning we talked about Kuroikime's attacks, Warple Strike, Starburst Stream and Eclipse being completely different from the traditional attacks with those names, likely being ranged incarnate versions discovered by Kirito. Well, she learned them all from this Graphite Edge, who was her mentor. He has a full black armor shaped like a black coat using dual blades. His sword style is called the Ein style. Underworlders would find that style name quite familiar with Kirito's Einkrat style around. What are the known sword skills that are part of this Ein style? Slant, the one hit starter skill from SAO. Vertical square, the four hit single target skill from SAO. Cross block, a defensive dual blade skill exclusive to SAO. Spinning shield, a defensive skill from SAO. Warple Strike, 1 hit lunging skill from SAO, Starbar Stream, the 16 hit dual blade skill exclusive to SAO, and the Eclipse, the ultimate dual blade skill with 27 hits exclusive to SAO. Maybe even more depending on the last time that entry on the Axel World Wiki was updated. It is heavily speculated and you can guess why, that Graphite Edge may just be Kirito, however there's an aspect that prevents this in Axel World. One can only log into Brain Burst if they were born with the Neuralinker, otherwise they would be deemed incompatible with the extreme acceleration ability required by the game. However, technically speaking, Reiki can easily bypass this arbitrary rule by saying something like well, he just adapted to it when he was forced to go through the maximum acceleration phase in Elicization. Some people think Graphite Edge is the Star King version of Kirito, which is generally not agreed upon, because 200 years old Grandpa Kirito would likely not behave like Graphite Edge does. But I just think it'd be terribly lame if Graphite Edge ended up being Kirito. Most people don't even want such a strong direct tie between the series because it prevents SAO having its well-deserved proper conclusive ending. Either way you are fine as long as you do not base your theory off of that one clip from Axel World Wars SAO game. <laughs> どこかに行くんだ。まあ、こんな。<laughs> it's non-canon fan service game that knows how to entertain fan theories and tease them properly, but I, I digress. Cue the insignia of the Star King. Funnily enough, while Star King's insignia was first mentioned in the Illustration Light Novels, it was first properly visualized in the Axel World Light Novels as the SSS Order, a special program of sorts that was given to Kuroikime by Graphite Edge. The Night Sky Sword and the Radiant Light side by side, enveloped in blue roses on both ends and Osmanthus flowers on both sides. And of course, we later saw the exact same insignia in Elsation Anime 2 in the Dragon Crafts. But I think with 7 pages in, th this is all the major connections we have at the moment. There are other simpler stuff like Kirito thinking about a portable STL in Unital Ring, the brain implant chip, but I glossed over them. There's also the Nerve Gear cameo from the Axel World anime, but that's an anime only edition anyway, so don't take it seriously. Hopefully, this video gave you a better context about the ties between the two series, nothing is still in any way shape or form conclusive, and maybe, you know, it even convinces you to jump into the light novel territory for both SAO and Axel World, so you can theorize these things better yourself. Amazon links are going to be down in the description. 
Make sure to subscribe for more content, like and comment to show your support. You can even consider becoming a channel member or grab some channel merch, Lens Squad, the first day and more await you there. Up until next time, which will hopefully be a shorter answer to an easier question, my voice is already cracking. Until then, stay cool.